Okay, there's this woman named Julie Green. This is her on the right, Julie Green. Claims to be a prophet of God, claims that uh, she has insight into Jesus and what he wants, you know, more clearly than anybody else. And what Jesus wants is Donald Trump, apparently. Seriously, that's what she believes. And she thinks that, like, she has this special insight that God is, like, talking to her or whatever. It's, like, painfully stupid. Anyway, um, I wanted to listen to what she had to say on this show with this guy who believes that she is a prophet. Dude's name's Dave Scarlett. He has, like, a podcast that, that we're about to watch. So we're going to watch this podcast with Julie Green and Dave Scarlett, see what they have to say for themselves, okay? Now, I, to, um, to start out, like, they start talking before their images are on screen, so I'm just going to step back to the sponsors of this absolute nutter buttery a little bit. So you guys have to listen to their ridiculous sponsorships. Who sponsors a prophet of Donald Trump? Let's see. Cranberry seed oil apparently sponsors um, prophets of Trump. Cranberry seed oil. So now you know. If you support Donald Trump and his prophets, you know that you can buy some cranberry seed oil and and help this guy out because he supports him too. This is like, God, dude, I'm sorry. This is so stupid. All right, let's listen to these two guys. And while we listen, we're going to play some um, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm just kind of going through battles and stuff. There won't be any spoilers. I'll cut them out or blur them if there are any. Anyway, uh, let's give this a listen. Julia today uh, about truth and how the truth is coming out. Use his glory code 15% uh, for chronology. It makes me sleep. Oh, this is painful, dude. This is so painfully stupid. He, he, they actually gave this guy a code to give to his audience so that they can get like uh, like a um, a discount on this cranberry seed oil. Really? Okay. Great. Uh, it's great stuff. Buy one, get one free only for February and March. Uh, so get those, uh, get that today. It's the best stuff. Wait, what was that? Did, what just flew by? Was that hemp something? Percent. Oh my God. It's hemp. It's hemp oil. Look at this. It's being advertised as hemp oil. I love everything about it. Yes. These people are supposed to be like men of God or whatever, or women of God. I can't believe that they're talking about weed here. Okay. Well, it is hemp. It's not weed. They're technically a little different. One is the male plant. One is the female plant, I believe. Uh, for chronology, it makes me sleep great. Uh, it's great stuff. Buy one, get one free only for February and March. Uh, so get those, uh, get that today. It's the best stuff out there. And then the last thing is silver and gold. Get your silver and gold. The market's are about ready to tank. Oh, market's about ready to tank. Any five seconds now, right? Market's going to tank. You better have your silver and your gold. Everything's going to silver and or gold back. Dude, this is this is painfully stupid. Seriously. So this would be a great time. Only $2,000 minimum. IRAs and 401ks. You can roll over and you have physical assets coming into what is about to happen in the world. Dude, what a scam. Seriously. That's insane. The guy is telling people to turn in their IRAs and, and all that junk. Turn in their IRAs so that they can buy silver and gold. Are you kidding me? Really? That is shameless. It is a shaking. And, and we haven't even gotten to the show yet. We're still listening to the sponsorships. Bro, you're telling people to turn in their IRAs for your completely garbage gold. Really? Uh, now it's time to bring on Julie. Julie Green and Wednesdays. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Thank you for having me back on. It, it took me a while to literally see you. Uh, we were getting the, the, the film up and you could hear me and you could see me, but I couldn't see you. But now I can see you in three places, four, three places. Yeah. Four Good. places. Good. I'm glad yeah. you can see me. Yes, we are in the same tech. We are on the same stage, just, you know, a couple hours apart. And we'll be in the same state uh, next week, right? We'll yeah. be in Oklahoma uh, together. Yeah. 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 This is super heartwarming and great. Yes. Fantastic. All right. Let's get to the Trump nutter buttery. Anyway, uh, Archbishop Vingano. Ooh, boy. Okay, we're battling the Turks, and now we're battling, um, what's his name? Uh, Shinra's son, uh, President Shinra's son, Rufus. Rufus Shinra. 
Dude, I really like the outfits. I like the 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 motif, the look and feel of all of these characters. I think it's on point. All right, let's keep listening to this nutter butter. I uh, had a call to the Swiss. Uh, the Swiss. Uh, I'm sorry. Step back. Oh, he's in the hospital right now. And then, uh, as I mentioned to you, in January, uh, Archbishop Vingano uh, had a call to the Swiss. Uh, the Swiss uh, army. And I miss this. This is a big deal. Uh, I'll read this here. We'll go in and get into the the the, 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 the lines later. But Archbishop Vigano called for the Swiss guards to remove and arrest Pope Francis and Cardinal Fernandez after discovery of a porn. Oh, wow. OK, so he's saying that the Swiss, you know, the Swiss famous for getting involved in political matters. That's like what they're all about. Isn't that what like they did most famously got involved in political matters during World War Two? Seem to remember something about the Swiss, like taking a hard stand in World War Two, right? Something to that effect. Anyway, the Swiss are apparently arresting the Pope of all people. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Totally. That that checks out. Absolutely. Guys, these conspiracy theories have gone too far. They're too far now. OK. The Swiss Guard is the Pope's personal guard, basically the Vatican Secret Service. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, interesting. So the Swiss Guard, okay, that's my mistake. Uh, the Swiss Guard, I guess, the guy was saying that the Swiss Guard arrested the Pope. So it, it would be like the Secret Service arresting the president then. Pornographic uh, scandal. I missed that in January. Did we, we haven't talked about that, have we? No, I didn't even hear about it either. So somehow wow. I missed it too because I have, I haven't even heard about it either. She says I have a lot of different prophecies regarding the royals and um, how they are not they not they're not a, they don't appear. The, what's going on is not what it looks like. Is what I'm trying to get at. I'll mm, I bet to the royals. Interesting. Go on. Put it out. But also she has special insight into the royals and what they're up to because God gave her that special insight. I believe you 100 percent. Oh, like I was just reading over some of the ones for Charles and um, God is saying things are not how they appear to be with him either. And so this is very interesting with all these things going on. And I actually read one that said um, that he wait. So did she just say that God told her that King Charles is not what he appears to be either? Is that. Am I reading this correctly? Um, that he was going to let Andrew take the fall for all the scandal, for all like F scene and things like that, when he's just as guilty as his brother was. You know, the whole house of cards is coming down. Before I forget, um, Prince Andrew or Andrew was tied. He got let off by the same judge that prosecuted President Trump in the uh, um, okay. <laughs> what New York case. That what what the hell you, Prince Andrew was let off by the same judge that let that what prosecuted Trump is that what he just said just came out this week yes he let he let uh Andrew go okay well I don't even know if that's true but if it were true do you think that maybe it could possibly be because this one judge is in this district and this district just so happens to be where a lot of famous people live and work and whatever. Is that possible? Think you could have anything to do with that? Can you imagine the same happens to be the same judge that lets Andrew go in the Epstein case? What are the chances? Is the same one that just throws the unconstitutional things at President Trump. Wow, are you telling me that a judge oversees a certain district, a specific area? Knock me over with a feather. I am so surprised. If this is even true, it's very likely completely fabricated. Trump. The, it's the uh, same judge. Engeron? Yes. Okay, Engeron was a judge for only one of Trump's many cases. Let me look that up. Engeron. I'm looking for any evidence. I want any evidence at all from a reputable source. I'm seeing zero evidence. Uh, that like um, Engeron oversaw Prince Andrew's case. If you don't know the situation, King Charles took the throne when Elizabeth died. His brother, Andrew, Prince Andrew, complete scumbag. I don't believe that he's in line for the throne. Andrew isn't.
he knew Jeffrey Epstein, was close friends with Jeff- Jeffrey Epstein, just not a good person at all. Disgusting. Likely did some very horrible stuff to children, is my guess. Anyway, um, so these people are claiming that Engeron, the judge that oversaw the Trump case, also, what was like, let Prince Andrew out of all of the trouble that he was in for doing that absolutely terrible stuff to those poor children? I'm finding no evidence of that whatsoever. Maybe, I suppose. I mean, New York City is a big place, but uh, Manhattan isn't. There are only so many district judges and all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm not seeing any evidence of that. Wait a minute. I'm looking. I I really want to know. Is this true? It doesn't appear to be true. It seems to be just like made up completely. But don't you love it how this guy can just come out here and say whatever he wants with zero repercussions? There's like no downside to him saying whatever it is that he wants to say. And people just believe it, just like that. Boom. I believe it. It's shameless and embarrassing. I had a prophecy about him a couple weeks ago, and the Lord said he was going to come down. I had a prophecy about him a couple weeks ago? Talk about Andrew? Well, I hope Andrew comes down. He's absolutely terrible. But aside from all of that, um, it wouldn't be hard to guess that Prince Andrew is going to face justice at some point. I would love to see Andrew face some justice for real. That would be fantastic. Complete scumbag, that dude. He was, he's going to be disbarred. He will not be able to keep what, where he's sitting at because. uh, I like, well, oh, Engeron. Okay, I'm sorry, Engeron. She's talking about Engeron. Uh, Judge Engeron is going to be disbarred, apparently, in her mind. Okay. Again, God is a judge over all the earth. You cannot do this kind of injustice and get away with it. Just like Fannie Willis is figuring that out down in Georgia. You know, she thought she could do whatever she wanted, and it's not. All of these indictments, just like God said, were all going to implode. You see the problems with Jack Smith. You see the problems with Alan Bra- Alvin Bragg. There are no problems with, like, any of these people. Like, what the hell are you talking about? What bizarre fantasy land do you live in? where you seem to believe that there are, like, problems with these people. What the hell is happening right now? My God, people. Get help. You said problems with Fannie Willis, and now this Engeron one. Just watch. And also the one with E. Jean Carroll, whatever her name is. Yep, that she's one- a- whatever her name is. Oh, my God. Uh, she's the one who sued Trump for defaming her and got him officially in court labeled a li- a civilly liable rapist. Yes, Trump is now a civilly liable rapist because of what he did to E. Jean Carroll. And of course, these people hate E. Jean Carroll without question. Yeah, uh, automatically can't stand E. Jean Carroll. But- also falling apart. So all of these, it's just... I'm telling you, a lot of things were allowed to happen for their ultimate fall and destruction. Okay, so I know you, I, I don't know this for a fact, but you can help me with this. I'm sure people came after you saying, well, Julie talked about the king and all this stuff. And well, whatever people thought six months or whatever that go that was, everything's changed this weekend because we see who they treated as the re- their real king. Mm-hmm. I was telling you before, I got, a, I got a text message from a couple of Intel sources on Sunday that he got a text message from a couple of Intel sources, Intel sources, who? Tell me who exactly. Who are your intel sources specifically? Did you check this out? Big things are going on in England. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? And then I got a video of three of three soldiers doing uh, an eyes right in front of Buckingham Palace with no flag. And I did a little bit of research, and they told me this is v- extremely rare for this ever to happen. And the king's not around. This would only be done if there was a king or a queen there. Oh, my God, dude. Like, I don't know exactly what he's talking about right now. But it sounds like he's just, like, living in this fever dream of, like, insane conspiracy brain. Like, earlier I was talking about, um, what's his name, Uh, Stu Peters? Seeing Jews behind every corner. Jews are responsible for everything. They did everything. They're all doing all this stuff. Oh, my God. 
that's basically what we're watching happen right now, like as we speak. This guy says that he saw some people do, you know, they blinked wrong. Oh, my God. And because they blinked wrong, that's a sign that we now know unequivocally that, that like, the Swiss guard arrested the Pope. and blah, 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 blah. Dude, I'm supposed to be finding Kate Sith, and it's very frustrating. Let me just look it up. How to get Kate Sith. Well, lo and behold, what, two hours later, Rothschild dies. Jacob Rothschild. Oh, my God. The Rothschilds. That's who they were signaling to, their king. Mm -hmm. And then you hear all this about King Charles supposedly has six months to live or less with cancer. And uh, these guys, they like this. I'm sorry. The conspiracy brain on these people is like absolutely untouchable. It's nuts, dude. Uh uh, Harry, there's Harry's in the news again today, and they can't travel. All this stuff is falling apart. So they're actually saying he only has six months to live. I did not yes. know. That. I just knew. He I have not heard a word about that. I think that he's flat out lying here. It, uh, did Prince Charles? Hang on. No, uh, I'm sorry, not Prince Charles. Uh, King Charles, six months to live. Okay, all, all I'm finding, as far as the source goes, is. Boingboing.com. I'm sorry, dot net. Boingboing.net. My mistake. I'm not seeing any reputable sources making any claims about that. I'm finding YouTube channels that, that, that are claiming it. Cancer can't be stopped. Charles has six months to live. Yeah, I'm not like finding any actual evidence of this at all. There's a Reuters article here. Let's see what Reuters says. After spending more than seven decades waiting to become sovereign, Britain's King Charles has been diagnosed with a form of cancer less than 18 months since he ascended to the throne. Buckingham Palace on Monday announced that Charles, 75, would postpone public-facing duties while he undergoes treatment, but was looking forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything about that here. This sounds like complete nonsense to me. I'm sorry. I heard was that was like, you know, they're making it like a, it wasn't a big deal. And I'm like, they're lying because yep. God said he was going to have an ultimate fall. Um, and one thing I did, the I got a lot of persecution for the, you know, he's never going to be king. He's never going to get that crown. And I tell people this. Okay, because when I asked the Lord about it, I said, Lord, if you want me to apologize, I will apologize. What do you want me to do about this? What kind of insight do you have for me? Um, what kind of instruction do you have for me to give the people? And he said, point blank, Julie, there was a fake inauguration. As a there was a fake inauguration. God told her there was a fake inauguration. Are you kidding me? What kind of insight do you have for me? Um, what kind of instruction do you have for me to give the people? And he said, point blank, Julie, there was a fake inauguration as a president. So you have a person that's acting as a sitting president when he's not really the sitting president. And I said, well, yeah, we had a fake inauguration for sure. Oh, my God, dude. He said, but you also can have a fake coronation. Mm -hmm. So just because. It so the royal family isn't real. I, or I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what she's saying, right? I'm trying to understand. Is she saying that the royal family is fake? The coronation was fake? I mean, it doesn't matter if the coronation was... Wait, it, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter if the coronation took place or not. That's irrelevant. He was automatically king the moment that Elizabeth died. There was no, like, overlap there. He was the king. So, like, I don't know, like, what she's going on about right now look like a real coronation just because it looked like the real crown doesn't mean it was or he could even have the real crown but it doesn't matter because if you are really not the blood king or the rightful heir it doesn't matter what it looks like you can have a fake coronation she's saying it was a fake crown he got a fake crown really get help julie this is insane. And that's exactly what we had with Charles. That's why when the Lord ever brought him up, he always said either Charles or Prince Charles. At the time he was called Prince Charles, but he's never called him king. 
Yeah, because he wasn't king yet. What are you talking about? When Elizabeth is still alive? No, he wasn't king yet. Well, it's like always see- he doesn't say Joe anymore. He hasn't for a long time. He always calls him the Biden. There's a reason. Who calls him the Biden? What are you talking about? Oh, my God, dude. See, this is conspiracy brain. Like gone completely wild. It's run amok at this point. She's coming up with conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory. She thinks that because they use a certain word here or there, or they don't use a word here or there, it's a sign that, like, secretly, what, what, the Jews are running things or some other thing? Like, I don't know. Get help. Why he uh, references people in certain ways. Well, Tucker Carlson... But I'm sure you know what's happening in the game if you've seen this before. Or, like, if you've played the original, Kate Sith was a traitor, it turns out. He works for Shinra, and he took the keystone, and he gave it to the Turks, and everybody finds out about it. And then Kate Sith blackmails the party and says, we have Marlene. If you don't cooperate, then we're going to kill her, basically. But Kate Sith does ultimately turn out to be a good person. Anyway. Always said either Charles or Prince Charles. At the time, he was called Prince Charles, but he's never called him king. Wow. It's like well, we see- he doesn't say Joe anymore. He hasn't for a long time. He always calls him the Biden. There's a reason why he uh, references people in certain ways. I-, I have no idea what he's talking about. Well, Tucker Carlson kind of shocked the world yesterday. He's been shocking the world a lot lately, but... Oh, my God, Tucker Carlson. He he said something, and Tucker is pretty precise. When he says something, you can sometimes... It's like Trump in some ways. It, it's There's a deeper meaning. He's Okay, there's not a deeper meaning with Trump, okay? He's just dumb as dog shit. That's just what it is. You know what? I'm not that guy. I don't insult people. I apologize. I will let others do it for me. I'm dumber than a box of rocks in a lot of areas. Thank you, Greg Locke. I appreciate your input on the subject. I've lived for the Lord my whole life, and I was dumb as a box of rocks and didn't know it. Thank you, Shane Vaughn. Shane Vaughn knows. He knows. Said that uh, he he alluded to that that uh, Biden wasn't the real president, and he he alluded to that Bri- Biden wasn't he was a fake. Wow, Donald Trump alluded to the idea that Biden wasn't really the president, knock me over with a feather. Could have fooled me. All right, let's see. Hang on. There's this, um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this guy, Mark Taylor. He got famous originally for um, because he was in a film called The Firefighter Prophet. And he is one of the, like, um, the, the bases for the claim that Trump is like prophesied to be the guy that God is going to whatever he claimed in 2014 or something that Trump is going to run for president, something he'd actually been talking about for like years. And uh, since like the 2000s, and he claimed that in 2014, Trump was going to run. Actually, he claimed it in 2010 that Trump is going to run in 2012. And he didn't. And he claimed it again in 2014, about 2016. This time he was right. Well, they ignore the hit, the misses and they zero in on the hits, so he's now a prophet, the firefighter prophet. Well, Mark Taylor got, you know, he went down into conspiracy brain like you wouldn't believe this dude did, right? Just like the people were watching uh, on screen, completely out of their heads on, like, conspiracy theories. Just step back and listen again. But he he said something, and Tucker is pretty precise. When he says something, you can sometimes it's like Trump in some ways. It it's there's a deeper meaning. There's not a deeper meaning with Trump. But this isn't the first time that I've heard this from some uh, what, you, what would you call it? So like from some Trump nutcases, I guess. I heard this from Mark Taylor himself. Um, who knows how long ago this is? Uh, when was this? 2020. This is uh, November, mid-November 2020. This is uh, a week or so after Trump lost the election, I believe. Give this a listen. This is him talking to a guy named Erskine. It was on Erskine Radio Show. They're calling, even calling it the Biden vaccine. That's Erskine speaking right now. 
and they're pissed off, Mark Taylor and Erskine, they're pissed off that Biden might take credit for creating the vaccine when Donald Trump was the one in the lab with the beaker and all, you know, the the, the goggles and the the little, uh, you know, the utensils and all this stuff. And he was the titrations and all that. Donald Trump was the one in the lab doing that stuff. Okay. Biden wasn't in the lab doing that. It was Trump doing it. So this should be the Trump vaccine, not the Biden vaccine. That, that's what they were saying at the time, really. Okay. So continue listening. He's miffed. They're calling, even calling it the Biden vaccine. And isn't it interesting? They wait till a week after the election to announce they have a vaccine. Right. This has been a set up from the very beginning from the Democrats, you know, whether it was trying to hurt Trump with the COVID, whether it was trying to hurt him uh, with this or that. I mean, there's so many different things. You know, the vaccine, I, I tell people, if you were listening to Trump back in the COVID times, to a lot of his press conferences, Trump's 10 steps ahead of everybody. No, Trump is not 10 steps ahead of everybody. And when you listen to him speak, every time that he would say the word COVID, switch that out with the word cabal. Mm -hmm. Every time that he, he says, what is the cure? By the way, a guy talking now is Mark Taylor. So every time you hear the word COVID, switch it out with the word cabal. The vaccine. What is the vaccine? We, the people in the military, when they go in and they start arresting these people. I think this, he was giving code out a lot of times to the people because there's always more than one depth of revelation to what he says. Did you catch that word he just said right there? Revelation. One more depth of revelation to what Trump says. That It doesn't sound like he views Trump as like a normal political figure. He's a religious figure to Mark Taylor. This is a religious situation, religious person viewing Trump as a religious figure now. This is nuts. So much far ahead of the game. So the vaccine is the cure for what? The cabal. That's what's going to happen, I believe, when they release the vaccine. We're going to go with corona. So it's the cure for the cabal. Once they release, they being Trump, I guess. Once Trump releases the vaccine, which is totally 100% going to happen, any, any minute now he's going to release the vaccine. It did release under Donald Trump then the cabal will be destroyed. Trump is going to destroy the cabal with the vaccine. And did that happen? Of course it didn't happen. Get help. It's called the coronavirus. Now, if you go with corona, C-O-R-O-N-A, six letters. C is the number third letter in the alphabet. O is the 15th letter. R is the 18th. O is the 15th. N is the 14th. He's doing a what's called a gamatria right now. Um, a gamatria is an old Jewish um, puzzle, kind of like Sudoku, I guess where you've got like a, a set of words on one side, you've got a number on the other, and you try to work out what the word is. It's like missing some stuff um, based on how many like characters you have or how many numbers you have or whatever other thing. And it's usually done for like bar mitzvah boys who are, you know, they're... It's so like it's just some nice like moral message or or life lesson or something to that effect. Usually, I've spoken to a Jewish person about it who who's you know used to do gematria all the time. It was never never used as prophecy, like the old Jewish whatever. It was never used as prophecy. So anyway, um, this guy here is doing a gematria on COVID to to prove, I guess, or whatever, that COVID is actually secretly like, a, you know, a, an agent of the devil or some other nonsense. R is the 18th. O is the 15th. N is the 14th. A is the first. Six layers in Corona. Those other numbers add up to 66. Six wait, so <laughs> wait a minute. So the numbers added up to 66. You t are you trying to tell me that the numbers didn't even add up to 666. You're just like adding an extra six because you wanted to? 666, six, a cult driven script and a Luciferian human sacrifice, a mega ritual. This is what Satan uses, and that's it. 666, Corona. Is that coincidence? I don't buy coincidence. Do you? Nope. Get help.
This is what happens when conspiracy brain runs wild. Seriously. Okay, this is like a week after the election took place and it was, you know, it, it was over. Trump lost. And these people, to this day, honestly, live in conspiracy land. And now we're listening to these guys right here, Julie Green and Dave Scarlett, go down this insane conspiracy theorist rabbit hole once again in an extremely similar fashion. A lot lately, but he he said something, and Tucker is pretty precise when he says something. You can sometimes it's like Trump in some ways. It it's there's a deeper meaning. There's a deeper meaning. Do you remember what they said a minute ago? Um, Mark Taylor and Erskine. There's always one more depth of revelation to what Trump says. You catch that? When. People like this, when people like uh, Mark Taylor or Julie Green or whoever else say things like that about Donald Trump, they're viewing him as a religious figure. It's a religious thing. He said that uh, he, he alluded to that that uh, Biden wasn't the real president. I get, is he saying Trump alluded to this? OK. And he, he alluded to that Biden wasn't he was a fake. Uh, it wasn't really him. He and did? This is on, he did yesterday. And this is two days. That was yesterday. The like, I don't know who they're talking about or what makes him so confident about any of this stuff. But this is just complete nonsense. Gematria was famously done for bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah for fun fortune. It's also done to know so, uh, someone's name. Can I get your number? Would be a common phrase for knowing someone's name in Gematria. That's interesting. The day before that, Tucker Carlson came out and just shocked the world and said, a hundred percent for sure the 2020 election was rigged. And of course, Tucker Carlson absolutely knows what he's talking about and is super, super trustworthy, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. He said that. And then he went and laid wow. out why it was rigged. Wow. Rigged. I totally miss this. Of course, of course, I don't get to watch the news all the time. I don't get to watch it when it's prophecy fulfilled. But it's like, I had no idea all this stuff was going on. I didn't know that Tucker came out. All this stuff is not going on, okay? Get help, Julie. This is insane. I, I didn't, I know that there was something that came out. I can't remember. Somebody said something at CPAC about the 2020 election. I think it was Steve Bannon about how much there was so much proof that it was like President Trump won 49 out of the 50 states or something. I only heard it from somebody. I actually didn't watch the clip myself. I just was told from one of my team members because we just got back from a prayer retreat uh, praying over the nation and praying for President Trump and stuff. So I had no idea what was going on. Well, they told me, they're like, yeah, he said that. They're, they He would have won 50, 49 out of 50 states if it actually would have showed the real thing. Dude, this is insane. I actually have a clip uh, from, what's his name, Steve Bannon from CPAC, like what she's talking about there. I don't know that I have that clip, but I do have one of them. I put it under MISC because I want to download it eventually. Here's the clip that I got that, that I really want to. Here's the clip that I got I, that I intend to download. And they stole the 2020 election. Media, I want you to suck on this. I want the White House to suck on this. You lost in 2020. Donald Trump is the legitimate president of the United States. Well, you're Trump. Well, you're simply wrong. Like you can claim that until you're blue in the face, but you're wrong. Trump won. Trump won. Trump won. Trump won. Trump won. Trump won. Lock him up. All of them. Garland, Ray, Biden, all of them. Mayorkas, what they did to this country is unforgivable. And we will not forget it, and we will never forgive it until justice is done. Only two other men in the history of this republic, General Washington and the Revolution and the Foundation, and Abraham Lincoln in the Civil War, have the personal fate and destiny of an individual be inextricably linked to the fate and destiny of this republic. Donald John Trump is the third person. Oh my God, dude. I'm telling you guys, they view him as a God. Now, 
Steve Bannon, I don't think he believes any of this. I think Steve Bannon is doing this because he wants Trump to know that he he wants to be his new Goebbels. He wants to be the propaganda minister. He's capable of propagandizing on Trump's behalf, and it's not a problem. That's what he wants to communicate to Trump, in my opinion. And his fate and destiny is to have the greatest political comeback in American history. And on November 5th, to drive the vermin out of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Vermin is the exact word that Trump used recently to talk about, um, you know, people that he doesn't like, basically. And it's also the exact word that Hitler and the Nazis used to refer to um, their political enemies, to Jews and other people. So to hear somebody refer to their political enemies as vermin is deeply disturbing. I don't, yeah, that's not good at all. Biden, you and your crime family are nothing but trash, okay? And on the 20th of January of 2025, we're gonna take out the trash. This is a crusade of righteousness. Are you with us? Are you with us? Are we onward to victory? Will anything stop you? Are you onward to victory? Are you onward to victory? Are you onward to victory? When you set out to take Vienna, take Vienna. Thank you. That is insane. I'm sorry. That is insane. That is insane. Get help. Now, I don't believe for a second that Steve Bannon believes what he's saying here. I think he just wants to perform to prove to Donald Trump that he can totally 100% be his propaganda minister, his Goebbels. Honestly, I really do believe that. It's insane, though. The whole thing is nuts. Anyway, let's keep listening to these people talk about how much they love Donald Trump and how great he is and all that. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned that, what, how many years ago now? Three years, maybe four years ago, because a certain general that I know uh, knew exactly what the, the, the actual numbers were. And he told me at that time that Trump won 49 out of 50 states, including California. And he said, uh, what else did he say? It was like 400 and 410 electors. And then um, I've seen Mike, Mike uh, Lindell's evidence in, in public. Mike Lindell didn't have any evidence. Like and in private, and that's overwhelming proof that this was a landslide. I mean, it wasn't even close. A certain general that I know, he might be talking about um, Flynn, but you know who else he might be talking about? He knows General McKinnerney. Seriously. Uh, McKinnerney was a general in, I'm not sure which war he was a general in, but it was a long time ago. And he got in all kinds of hot water forever ago because he said, like, he was basically repeating talking points on behalf of the Pentagon on Fox News. And when that was, like, uncovered, they stopped allowing him on Fox News. And he had, he was, like, resigned to um, these types of TV shows, you know, this, this type of deal right here. So, yeah, he, he knows McKinnerney, for example. That's probably who he's talking about here. 